Hello and welcome back. Congratulations on reaching the final chapter. You've made it to the last chapter of this Django course, and that's a fantastic achievement. Your dedication and hard work have brought you to this point, and now it's time to tackle one of the most important aspects of web development, authentication. Authentication is a crucial aspect of web application development, ensuring that users can securely log in access protected resources, manage their accounts, and not only that, but new users also can sign in or register from your website instead of creating a super user with a username and password from the command line. And in this tutorial, we're going to build a simple authentication form using Django Authentication System. Django Authentication System has a lot of out-of-the-box tools that can help you create a form that can have registration, login, and logout functionalities in no time. So there is a very important module called django.contrib.auth, which is responsible of creating your authentication. So you will find it by default in your settings.py and it's generated by the Django admin start project. So don't worry, we're not going to install anything outside of Django. Right, so we're going to see the middlewares, we're going to see the sessions and all that. Ultimately, the objective of this tutorial is to know how to set up user registration to allow new users to create accounts, how to implement user login functionality to authenticate existing users, also to create a logout mechanism to securely log users out of their accounts, and finally, how to protect specific pages so that only authenticated users can access them. We're going to see all of that in today's tutorial. All right, so I'm inside the global folder here and I want to go to lesson 10 authentication then i will activate the virtual environment by ppnv shell of course and then i will install django using ppnv as well all right awesome now i can create my project django admin start project and let's call this one auth project then i will uh, change directory to auth project and let's see what we have okay so we have the auth project and manage.py maybe i can increase this a little bit and we can uh, shut the explorer for now then um right let's do that again okay so i will use the manage.py command line to start my application and i'm going to call it auth app so we'll have auth project and auth app right so now we have the auth app auth project and manage.py so let me open um the auth project so the first thing that you want to do is to create your user registration uh, but before we do that we need to go to settings.py and i want to show you something very important so you see the django.contrib.auth content types sessions all of that is actually very important for your authentication so as i told you this exists by default you will not have to install anything outside of django uh, let me just um, add here my application so that's called auth app okay and also we will use a static folder for our css so i'm going to use css i wanted to use bootstrap to be honest but i thought maybe we can leave that to the final project we can use bootstrap for now i'm going to use simple css styling so we'll need the static files dirs this is a tuple of course as we know so os.path.join and i want to join the base directory with the static folder right and we need to go up and import the operating system module all right and we are set for now because we will need to return back to redirect to the home page after the login it's very early on to show you this so we're going to shut the settings.py for now and we'll go to create the user registration which is going to be forms.py in my application so i'm going to create this forms.py file and we've seen the last lesson how to create forms so from django i want actually to import the forms module that's the first module also i will need the user model the user model is imported from django auth system so the way to do that is from django dot 
contrib.auth.models, I want to import the user. This user class or model is very important because without it, we will not be able to let the user enter the username and password because without it, we will not be able to let the user register um, in the login form. So uh, yeah, we will need this for the username and password and password confirmation and all of that. So these are the two models or the two things that I want to import forms module and the user class. All right, so I want to create a class and this is going to define a form for user registration using the model form. Um, I'm going to call it register form. This is for, of course, form registration. And we're going to pass as um, the main parameter, the forms dot model form. So for the register form class, I will need two main things, the password and password confirm. The password is going to take the forms module dot character field. So this character field here is going to have a widget and the widget is going to take a password input from the forms module. So accessing the character field, we can have a widget and that widget here is equal to forms dot password input. You see, this is very easy and simple with Django. Everything is out of the box available for you to use it. So this is concerning the password. I also will need the password confirm. And this is, of course, to confirm the password field, like you would do in any website where you register for the first time. Um, it's going to be basically the same, but I'm going to add a label. And here I'm going to type confirm password. Then I'm going to have a metadata for the form. So that's going to be a class called meta. And I'm going to define the model to be equal to the user. And here simply I'm using the user model. All right. But also I need fields. So the fields here are going to be the username, the password and the password confirmed. This is a list of um, those fields, username, password and password confirm. Right, so these are the fields to include in our form. Till now, we haven't added any validation logic for our Django form. This is going to be done through a function that I'm going to create and I'm going to call it clean. So this clean function takes self, of course, pertaining to the self object. And this is actually a custom clean function or method for additional validation. And I'm going to use that actually to ensure that certain conditions are met beyond the basic field validations provided by Django. So let me show you what I want to do. First of all, I want to create a variable and I'm going to call it cleaned data. This clean data actually is going to call the parent classes clean method. So this is all about inheritance from the super class. And we're going to inherit a method called clean. Now you can read the description of the clean method. It says here that this is a hook for doing any extra form wide cleaning after field clean has been called on every field. So any validation error raised by this method will not be associated with a particular field. It will have a special case association with the field name underscore underscore all underscore underscore. So in English, this is a method of the parent class, which is form or model form. And this actually performs the standard cleaning and validation of all fields in the form. And then you want to store the result in this clean data variable. All right, because we're going to use it now. All right, so let's call on the clean method. And the next variable I want is the password. The password is going to be equal to the clean data dot get method to get the password entered by the user. And finally, I want the password confirm. So uh, maybe I can do like that. So the password confirm here also is going to take the clean data dot get. And instead of getting the password, it's going to get the password underscore confirm. The next step is very important. This is simply to check if the passwords match. And the way to do that is I'm going to check out if password and password confirm and password is not equal to password confirm. 
In this case, I want to raise validation error. That's a sort of error that's inside the forms module. So forms dot um, validation error. And this validation error, we can write here any message. And this message here, we can write any message that we want in order to alert the user that the passwords do not match. So we can say simply passwords do not match. And else I want to return the cleaned data. So we are returning actually the clean data if the validation passes. All right, awesome. Following that, we want to add views to handle the user registration. So we're going to import uh, different things here. First thing that I want to import with render is, of course, the redirect function, right? We have seen that the last time. Um, also, I will need to import from Django dot contrib dot auth. I want to I want to import authenticate. Also, I want to import login and I want to import logout. You see, all of these functions, all of this is code actually written and embedded inside Django. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You have everything in your possession. You need only to know how to use it. Also, I want to import from, um, from Django.contrib.auth dot decorators. So we're going to import the login required decorator. So decorators in Python, um, this is pure Python, so I hope you know what decorators are. But if you don't know, simply there are special functions that modify the behavior of other functions or methods. And they're typically used to add functionality like we're doing here, logging or access control without changing the original functions code. So um, they are immediately invoked and they trigger other functions. All right, so that's the one that we're interested in, the login required. Also, I want to import from Django.contrib.auth.mixins. So mixins are simply reusable classes that can add specific functionality to class-based views without being the primary parent class. I know we haven't studied class-based views. We've only studied the function-based views. So the function-based view and the class-based view basically do the same thing. One uses function, the other one uses classes. All right, so um, I don't need the login required, but rather I need the login required mixin. If we'll hover over, this is a class, as you can see on the screen, and it verifies that the current user is authenticated. So we're going also to touch on the class-based views in this tutorial. And speaking of class-based views, I will need to import from Django.views, I want to import view. Also, I will need the user class. So that's from the Django.contrib.auth.models. I want to import user. And the last thing I want to import from forms.py, the register form class. Import the register form from forms.py. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start creating our first function. So actually, we'll have different functions. Um, the first one is register view, and that's taking the request, of course. For now, I'm going to just pass. I'm going just to type all of the functions, and then we'll tackle them one by one. The next one is for login. So login view, also taking request, of course. And that's, of course, for the logout. And this right here is going to be for the home view, right? So I'm going to use the decorator actually here. So um, using the decorator. So the decorator here is going to be used to require login for this view. So um, that's going to be the login required, right? This one. Uh, after the decorator comes your function, actually, that you want to invoke. So that's going to be home view and taking request. And that's going to also for now we're going to pass. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and start by the register view. So for the register view, the first thing that I want to check out is the request method is post or not. 
So of course, that's registration form, right? So the HTTP request method is going to be naturally a post request. So um, if request method is equal to post, so that's going to be saved in a form variable, and I'm going to take the register form class, and we're going to pass inside the request dot post. So we're going to post the request actually, right? and we're going to save it in this form variable. Next, I want to check if this form valid or not. So I'm going to check out if form is, this is a method called is underscore valid. And if it's valid, I want to get the clean username data, not only the username data, I need also the password data. So I will need the username, the username is going to be equal to the form dot clean data dot get method and the get method is going to fetch that username and the same thing exactly for the password. And we can change this. So that's going to be the password here. The next thing I want to create a new user. So that's the usefulness of that user model or user class that we've imported. So I'm going to take the user class and I will access the objects dot method called create user. This is going actually to create the user based on the username passed. So the username is going to be equal to whatever username being entered. And the same thing for the password that's going to be equal to the password, uh, the password entered, right, and I'm going to store all that in a variable called user then take a look to the following. There is a method actually called login. So you can see that it says here it persists a user ID and a backend in the request. This way, a user doesn't have to re authenticate on every request. So actually, the login function takes three arguments, but we're going to use two only. The first one is the request. And of course, it's going to be a post request, right? Because we're checking out if the form is valid, that we want to post everything, right? The username, the password, right? That's typically a post request in um, in the registration form. Also, I want the user that we have just created here, right? That's taking uh, the objects that create user with the username and password. And finally, we want to redirect the user to the home page after logging in. And here actually comes the usefulness of this method redirect, which is used to redirect the user to a different page. So we're going to return, redirect, and I'm going to redirect the user to the home page. Now we haven't created URLs yet, but that's going to be the name of the home page, right? We're going to create different folders here. Uh, you can do it again in the application or you can do it in uh, the, the, the root folder. It really doesn't matter. Uh, either way, everything is going to be properly rendered. All right. And what if the form is not valid? In this case, I want to create an empty form instance. So form is going to be equal to the register form. That's not all because I want to render the registration template with the form. Um, again, we haven't created any URLs yet or any HTML pages yet, but we'll have a page called register.html. So I want to render taking the request, of course, as first parameter. And the second one is the URL name. Uh, that's going to be in a folder called accounts. Inside it, I will have register.html. And don't forget about the last argument, which is our context. And this is a dictionary, and it's going to hold the registration form. So the form here in single strings, that's going to be the key. And the value is going to be the form itself, the register form itself. All right, so this is our register view. Now let's go ahead and create our login view. Of course, the login view is very important for your login functionality. Without it, the user will not be able to log into the website. So the login view actually looks like the register view. Um, so we're going to start it at least the same. So we're going to check out if the request dot method is equal to post. And in this case, uh, I want again, a username, and the username here is taking the request dot post dot get the username itself. The same thing for the password. So uh, maybe it would be smarter to do like that and change both in the same time. All right. Now I want 
the user itself. Instead of using um, the user class, I'm going to use a method or a function called authenticate because we are authenticating the user as the user is already registered. So I want to, um, to use this method called authenticate. And as you can see, it says here that if the given credentials are valid, we will return a user object. So that's exactly what we want. We want to pass inside the authentication method, a request, um, the request itself, which is going to be post. The second and third arguments are going to be the username and password. So the username is going to be equal to the username itself. Also, the password is going to be the password itself of the user for logging in. Right, so this is the login view, but that's not it because we want to check out if the authentication was successful. In other words, I want to check out if the user is not none. In this case, I want to log the user. Again, I'm using this beautiful login function that takes request as first argument and user as second argument. And here, simply, I'm going to take the request dot post method dot get next. So we're simply saying here that we will store those options in a variable. First option is with the post request dot get next, which means the next um, the next URL or that's going to be the same thing, but instead of post, that's going to be get request. So we're going just to change the name of the HTTP method. Um, the last option is going to be simply home, right? That's going to be the home page that we're going to create. And I'm going to save all that in a variable called next URL. And then we will redirect the user to this next URL, right? But Let's just return that. But what if the authentication was not successful? In this case, I want to set the error message. So uh, we'll say something like invalid, invalid credentials, right? And I'm going to store it in error message. So this error message actually is going to be entered in the context within the render method when we're going to render the login.html page. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just make sure that I'm uh, on the same line or uh, properly indented on the same line with the if else statement, right? So um, I want actually to render. We'll render here first is the request. Next, the accounts. Uh, we're going again to put this login.html file in a folder called accounts. So accounts will hold the login, the logout. We're going to see that later. Um, the context, as I said, that's going to be key value pair, the error being the key, and the value being the error message that we have just created. So that's going to be the error message passed as a context inside the render function. Now let's go ahead and tackle the next function, which is the logout view. Now the logout view is um, one of those functions that are very easy and simple to write whenever you're writing your authentication system for your um, registration form or login form. So um, basically what I want to start with is again checking out if the request method is post. So that's actually going to be the same thing here, right? So we're going to take that, or maybe do like this. I'm going to just take the whole line, right, and just put it down here below, right? So this is the first checking. And if that is the case, if the method is post, I will invoke a function called logout, like login exactly, we have the opposite for logging out. So that's going essentially to remove the authenticated user's ID from the request and it's going to flush their session data. Naturally, this takes a request and we want to return to redirect the user to the login page. And if the request is other than post, get for example, in this case, I will redirect the user to the home page. When you will click on the button to log out, you will be redirected to the login page. And if the request method is a get method, we're going to redirect the user to the home page. 
Right, now let's go ahead and tackle our last function here, which is our decorator, the login underscore required. And this is actually a way to enforce the user to be in his home page if the user is logged in, of course. So that's why the name even of the decorator is login required. Only if the user is logged in, we want to keep the user inside the home page. So here I'm going to render course, taking the request and the templates name is going to be home.html or index.html really doesn't matter. And I'm going to put that in a folder and I'm going to call it home and the file itself, I'm going to call it home.html. So that's simply to render the home template. Now I want to create something called protected view. The protected view is going to mimic any protected area only restricted for logged in users. Anyone who is not registered or logged in cannot see the content of this protected page. So I'm going to create this class and I'm going to call it protected view. And it's going to take the login required mixin as first parameter. And the second parameter is the view. That's why the, um, the comment was the same here for class based views for both the login required mixin and the view. All right, so let's move on. I want a URL to redirect to for login. So this is going to be the login URL. But also I want to query a parameter for redirect URL. That's going to be the redirect to. So this class is going to have two different objects. The first object is the login URL. And the second object is redirect field name. Those two objects are necessary in the protected view class because we need one for a URL to redirect to for the login. And the second object, which is redirect field name, typically that's actually set to next, right? But we're going to write a custom redirection. Uh, just for you to know that this is the this is the usual one, I'm just going to put this here, uh, next to redirect URL. I'm going to write a custom one here and I'm going to call it redirect to. Then we will write a simple HTML page that's going to play the role of protected area of that website, which is only uh, restricted to those who are actually logged in. So I'm going to create a function called get and that takes self as first parameter, request second parameter, then we're going to render the request as first parameter again, and the templates name, um, gonna put it in a folder called registration. And inside that folder, I'm gonna create this file called protected.html. So this is basically everything that we have in our views.py file. Right, we have written quite some code here, we have written four different functions for the registration, for logging in, for logging out, and the login required decorator for the home view. All right, so let me go to uh, my application here. And let's create a folder together, I'm going to call it templates as usual. In templates, I will have three different folders. The first one is accounts. The second one is auth um, auth one underscore app. And the third one, I'm going to call it registration. Inside accounts, I will have three different files, the login.html, the logout.html, and the register.html. For the auth app, I will have or auth one uh, underscore app, I will only have the home page home.html. And for the registration folder, I want um, to create a file, which is going to be for the protected view protected.html. Right, um, let me go and make migrations for now, even if nothing to migrate, um, we haven't created any models. But this step is very important. So I will do Python manage the pi make migrations. Okay, awesome. Um, if no change is detected, that means that we don't have any errors. 
and migrate. Migration is uh, completed, so no errors. That's fantastic. Now let me shut the integrated terminal. Uh, just before we forget, we can actually create this folder also for the styles. So static, inside static we'll have styles, and inside styles we'll have um, styles.css. All right, awesome. So now let's go to the register and write this page. And as always, we're going to start this with load static, right? For the title, uh, we're going to say register, right? Uh, for the styles, let's just do link. And for the href, uh, maybe I can give it type also. So let's explicitly give this a type of uh, text for slash CSS. Horizontal reference, uh, we want to pass the correct path, right? So that's going to be styles forward slash styles.css. Um, yeah, and I think uh, that's everything for the head. As far as the body is concerned, we want a div with class of container. Here I will have h2 tag and I will say here register. And of course, we need a form for registration. So the action for the form is going to be the URL for the register, right? The file is called register.html. We're going to give it a name of register in views. And that's going to be inside curly braces and ampersand. And here, that's the URL. I want to go to the register page. And that's actually going to be submitted when you will click on the register button. Um, do not forget about the method. That's post method, right? So we have a post method and we have the action to take us to the register page. Right, so inside here, whenever you have a form with post method, you need to have a CSRF token for security. The CSRF token or the cross-site request forgery is very important to protect you against malicious attacks. And whenever you have a form with post method, you need to have a CSRF token. The CSRF token is very important to protect you against any malicious attacks. Um, CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery, and this token is used for security. Um, next, I want to render the form fields as paragraph elements. So uh, if you remember, we have made that the last time, form dot as underscore P that's going to be wrapped around double curly braces. And finally, we will need a button with type submit. And we're going to write here register. So we're, we're actually letting the user click on that button to register. And the form is going to take the user to the registration page. So that's basically our register.html page, a simple form with a button called register. When the user clicks it, it will redirect the user to the register.html. All right, now let's go ahead and write our login page. So the login page again with the load static and we'll wrap that um, in curly braces and ampersand, right? And we'll have a normal HTML file again. And here in the title, I'm going just to type login. And of course we will need, uh, maybe I can take it from the other file. So we can take it from the register. I need uh, the styles. So we're going to copy that actually. And let's paste it in the login. And I'm going to paste that under the title. Um, one thing that I don't want to forget is that I will need style here style for um, the error message to be in red color. Um, but that's going to be only one line uh, that's going to be for the error message, I want the color for that message to be red. And that's going to be the error message if a user tries to log into the website, but he's not registered. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the body and let's have our form. Again, I will need h2 tag and here I will write login. And also I will need a form with uh, the action. Again, I will need to go to the login URL. And also do not forget the method that's going to be post. So method here is post. And in the form, I need to have the CSRF token. So we'll have the CSRF token. And here goes very interesting part. 
that's going to be a hidden input to store the next URL after the login. So basically, this is a hidden input. And let's write that. So that's going to be an input field, but we will have a hidden type, right? So that's not going to be visible. And I'm going to give it the name of next. And the value is going to be equal to next. So that's going to redirect the user after I will need the div with class form group. So that's going to be div for the username input field. So uh, that div will have a class called form dash group. Inside the div, I will have a label. This label will have uh, the username. So for username, and here is going to be username. So that's the label, but also I want the input field. So that's going to be of type text. And also, I will give it a name of uh, username, right? And I will give it an ID of also username, right? And that's going to be a required field, right? So if you will try to uh, just hit on the login button, um, you will get an error because that's a required field. I will need the same thing for the password. So what I'm going to do is I will take all that and I will duplicate it. And that's going to be um, instead of the username, I'm going to change all that. That's going to be password, except that here I want the P capitalized. And just below here, I need a button. That button will have type submit and we'll type here login. Right, so here I need to check if there is an error message. So here is checking for any error messages. So what I want to do is I want to add some logic. So I'm going to say if error, and I'm going to wrap that like this in curly brace ampersand. And don't forget to finish that if error by end if in one word like this. And inside that block, you will write your uh, whatever you want to write. Actually, I need to display the error message in red if it exists. So that's going to be in a paragraph with class error. And we're going to pass here the error. Right, so that's not going to be always on the page that only going to appear whenever we will have any errors. And before the end of the form, we'll have this, you know, option to register if you don't have an account. So that's going to be in a paragraph. And we'll insert inside here an anchor. This anchor will take the user whenever he will click on, we'll type here, register here. Whenever the, the user is going to uh, click on register here, that's going to redirect the user to the register page. That's going actually to be like that, like this URL. And that's register page. Again, we're going to uh, change the names or give names for the HTML um, templates. So the register.html is going to be called register, login.html is going to be login, and so on and so on. All right, guys, so this is everything in our login.html. Now let's go ahead and write our logout.html file. So again, we're going to start that with load static and we're going to wrap that in double ampersand and curly braces. And that's going to be a simple HTML file here. I'm going to um, call this page logout. And again, we're going to have our styling and in the body, I'm going to have a div with container class and I will have h2 tag, we'll say here logout. And we're going to just ask the user if you're sure that you want to log out. So are you sure you want to log out? Right? So this is the paragraph. And of course, we'll need a form and the form will naturally have a post method. The action here is going to take us to the logout page. So curly braces, ampersand, and here the URL, and that's the logout. All right, in the form, of course, we'll need the CSRF token, and I will need a button. That button will have submit type, and I will call it logout. And in case the user wants to change their mind, they can simply click on cancel.
So let's have an anchor and this anchor will have the home URL, right? So if you will cancel, you will get back to your home page. Curly braces ampersand URL and we want to go to home in case of cancel. And that's basically everything that we have in the logout page. So great job. We have actually written the register page, the logout page and the login page. Now let's go to the home page and write that real quick. Load static and that's wrapped in curly braces ampersand. And I'm going to change the title to be home and do not forget about the styling. So in the body, now we're going to have again a div with container class. Inside here, I will have H2 tag. We'll see here home. And I want you to be greeted with a welcome message when you log in to your home page. So we're going to put that in a paragraph. So I'm going to say here, welcome. And here in double curly braces, request.user.username, right? That's going to hold the actual username of the logged in user. Next, I want to redirect the user if they want to the protected page. This is going to show that the user can enter a reserved area to the logged in users only. So that's going to link us to the protected page. So I'm going to have an anchor again with horizontal reference going to the URL itself. So double uh, double ampersand in curly braces here URL and the name of the page is protected. And here simply we can see something like go to your protected page. So whenever the user is going to click on go to your protected page, they're going to see the protected page that we haven't actually written yet. So yeah, that's the main idea. But also I will need a form. And that form is a post form with um, the action of going to the logout page. So I need curly brace double ampersand again, and I need the URL here to go to the logout. And in the form here, I want, of course, the CSRF token. And also I will need a button. The button is going to be a submit button naturally, and we're gonna call it logout. So whenever the user is going to click on the logout button, they're going to be uh, redirected to the logout page. Right. And that's basically everything that we have in our home page, guys. Now let's go ahead and write our last page, which is protected page. And again, that's very easy and simple to do. We're going just uh, do not forget about the uh, load static. So load static. And in the title, I'm going to write here protected. Don't forget the styles right in the body, I want also, um, like we have done in all of the pages, div with container class, we'll have h2 tag, inside I will have here protected page, a paragraph that can, you know, say lorem ipsum, right? And uh, yeah, that's everything. Oh, we need also a link to the home page. So that's going to be an anchor that will take us to URL home page. And here we can just write home like that. Right. And this is our protected page. Now, of course, if we will run our server, we will not find anything because we haven't set the URLs yet. Right. So we'll need to work on that. So first of all, we will need to create URLs.py file um, in our application. And of course, the URLs.py exists already in the project. So let's set this up first. The first path, we know it already. That's the admin dashboard path. Um, but also we need a path on an empty route. So that's going to be on empty strings like that. We want to go to uh, or we want to include our application.urls. Now, the URLs in our application, we haven't written it yet. So I'm going just to write it even if uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense now. But we want that uh, this is a standard actually setting configuration that we need to do every time we write URLs. Right, so we need uh, from uh, from the django.urls, we need to import the path and include. So actually, we need three different paths: one for the login, the logout and the register. So uh, path so the first path is going to go to the login. So that's inside accounts folder that goes to 
the login page, but we will need to link the path to the view. So if you will go to views, actually, I need the login view. And the login view here is inside the views.py. So I will need to import from um, our application, which is called auth app. I want to import the views. And now I can use the views here to link the accounts for slash login. That's the, the location of your template with the actual views. So views dot login underscore view. And I'm going to give it a name of login. So that's the first path, but just don't forget um, the comma. And the second one, so I'm going actually to copy two for the logout and the registration. So login, instead of login, I'm going to change um, everything to logout. And also here, instead of login, we're going to change that to register. That's convenient. So uh, we are almost there. We need now to go to the URLs in our application. So I want from Django.URLs to import the path. Next, I want from the current directory to import the views. Now I want URL patterns, of course, as always, and we need also different path. Uh, we will need the login, the logout, the register, but also we will need the protected view. Right, so um, I need the first path that's going to be the login route. So on login forward slash, I want views dot login view. And also the name should be exactly the same name that we've given in uh, urls.py in the project. So I'll just minimize this a little bit. All right. Uh, so that's the first one. We need uh, three more. So login and we'll change that to logout and we'll change this to register and uh, the protected view class that we've created with um, um, class based view so that's going to go to protected route and here views dot protected view dot as underscore view and that's not login we're going to call that protected as well right uh, there is something's missing here, of course, the home page. So I want this last path to go on an empty route. Um, I need to go to views dot home underscore. Let me just check real quick. That was called uh, the home view. That's right. So I'm going to copy that. That's going to be here, right? The home view. Also, I'm going to give it the name of home. When I was creating the HTML pages, I said by mistake, we haven't created names in views yet. Actually, it's in URLs. So in the settings.py, what you want to do is you will go down below and you will do some configuration steps in regards to redirection to the home page after login. So when you will log in, you want to be redirected to the home page. I will uh, have a variable and I'm going to call it login underscore redirect underscore URL and that's going to be equal to the home page. That's it. Simple as that. You don't have to change anything else in settings.py. So let's go ahead and open our integrated terminal and try to run our application. Python manage.py run server and we have an error. No module named django.view. Indeed, it's django.views. Um, I misspelled that in views.py maybe. Yeah, indeed, we have the squiggly line. That's S, right? So that's register view. And yes, of course, that's uh, just by mistake. I apologize for that, guys. And the return, of course, that's going to be here. For the auth1 underscore app, I've just called here home. Well, actually, I will change it back to auth1 underscore app, and we'll keep it this way. Right, so that's the last thing that I want to change unless we will discover um, any bugs when we'll run the server. All right, so let's go ahead and run our server. Let's do Python manage the pi run server. And there we go. We have a login page. 
uh, username, password, login, register here. And if you will change the route and if you will type login, that's going to be the same thing, login basically. Um, but we're not logged in. Uh, one alternative through the command line, you can create a super user, but actually we haven't created the register form to create it through the command line. So what you need to do is to click on register here and hopefully we won't have any errors. Perfect. So this is the register form. Uh, of course, it looks ugly because we haven't added any CSS. Uh, or just the most important thing is the functionality. So let's check that out. And let me give this username speed run one, two, three. Uh, password, let's do hello world at one, two, three. Hello world at one, two, three. Register. And there we go, guys. This is the home page. Welcome speed run one, two, three. Uh, exactly the way that we have designed it and we can go to your protected page and log out button if we'll click to go to your protected page it tells you here that this is the protected page this is the space which is reserved to only logged in users you can click on home and we're back to home you can click on log out and we're logged out and that gives the chance to other users to log into the website now let me go to styles.css quickly and paste some styling that's inside um, the styles folder. That's basic styling guys. So from the login page, by the way, in the templates, I've actually deleted the small styling with the comment. I just put it inside the styles.css directly here. So that's going to be for the invalid credentials message. All right. So this is settings for the button and the button hover, um, general settings for the input fields, labels, uh, form group class, right? Uh, the H2 tag, the container and the body, right? So let me do control S to save. And let's check out again our website. Let's refresh. And we have a beautiful login form. Uh, let's try to log in with our speed run user. So let's do speed run 123. The password was hello world at 123 login and we have invalid credentials because obviously I made something wrong. So again, speed run one, two, three, and the password is hello world at one, two, three, login, and we are logged in. Again, we can go to protected page, return to home, log out, uh, you can register for new users. So you see our form is working perfectly, guys. Let's, uh, for the sake of fun, try to register with another user. Let's say, for instance, Sonic123. Uh, again, hello world at 123. If I'm going to do any other password and do register, we'll have here the message passwords do not match. That's awesome. Uh, the validation checking is working okay. So we can change passwords. We can do hello at one, two, three only. Hello at one, two, three, register. And we are successfully registered. So now we have created two different accounts for two users. Now, if I will go to the admin dashboard, you are authenticated as Sonic123, but are not authorized to access this page. Would you like to log into a different account? Because these accounts are not staff accounts. And if I will try to uh, log in with the speedrun123, password is hello world at 123, login again, it will tell me that I don't know who is speedrun123. It's not a staff account. And you can see it here, even it's very uh, clear. Please enter the correct username and password for a staff account. Those accounts that we have created are not specifically staff accounts, which means that speedrun123 and sonic123 are not admin accounts. They are simple user accounts. Let's log out, register. All right, so there you have it, guys. Authentication system in Django and the last chapter in this Django course. We have created together this beautiful registration form with login and logout functionalities. So once again, congratulations on finishing the last part of this Django course. And I will see you in the next project.